What's going on, everybody? Welcome into Cal One on One right here on Cape Atlantic League Live. I am your host, Nick Costco, and with me is Frank Rigatano, head coach of the Middle Township football team. Coach, thanks for joining me. Uh, obviously, we are getting deep into the weeds of summer right now as we get closer to August. I mean, I can't believe the season's already that close already. We're about maybe five, six weeks away from the season actually starting. So you guys over at Middle Township are coming off a pretty good season in 2022, six and four last year. Uh, you obviously made the playoffs for back-to-back seasons, and you rebounded after a lot of tough injuries early on in the campaign. So uh, how's the summer training been? What was the offseason like leading up to this moment, obviously with a more of a refreshed perspective going into 2023. Yeah, well, uh, thanks, Nick, for having me, first of all. And thanks for everything you guys do for the kids. Uh, it's great publicity for them. And I know they're looking forward to it. They already said something to me earlier in the weight room. But um, preparation so far has been really, really good. Um, we, we've got more numbers than we've ever had in two different stints in, in 22 seasons. I mean, we had 57 people at, at, at a, a workout yesterday. So um, with with numbers in the mid 60s. Uh, now, you know, you'll lose attrition. You'll lose some of those guys. But if we start the season in the mid 50s, that that's a phenomenal number for us. And the, and the good thing about this group is they played quite a bit of varsity football when they were freshmen. By this group, I mean the seniors. You know, we got 19 seniors this year. Um, and, and, and they've been through quite a bit with relative to, to being down and, and fighting and battling and, and being in two playoff games. So they're excited. We're excited to have our injury people back. Um, and, and we're looking forward to actually getting started. No doubt. And you mentioned the attrition, and but obviously great numbers for you guys in the summer. You mentioned almost about 60 players this summer, but you do return nine starters. It looked like, according to your notes you sent me actually before, nine stars on each side of the ball. So you're talking about a veteran team coming back here in 2023. Lots of experience, not really losing too many guys uh, to graduation or even transfers uh, these days uh, as well. So what's that like for you knowing that you pretty much have your, your core in place, but now you're just implementing younger guys that can maybe step up and obviously new guys coming into the program? Well, I'll be honest with you, it, it, it's great for us. You know, our, our system's really not going to change. We'll tweak things a little bit, um, you know, here and there to, to accommodate who we might be playing that week. But um, to, to, to explain something to the kids in a meeting prior to going out on the field and, and to have it, a look at who we got in there, knowing that they've done it for three years, it's just, it's most be honest with you, most of our time is being spent right now. Um, we're trying to get the freshmen acclimated to what we're doing. So, um, you know, there's possibility we might even have a freshman team this year. So things are, are, are really in a positive light for us at Middle Township. And to know that, our, you know, our offensive scheme and defensive scheme has been infused in the last couple of years. We really haven't changed a whole lot. And, and, and to put a play in and watch them execute it right now, it's, it's really it's pleasing and, and, and it's exciting at the same time. You call my eye uh, real quick there with her call my ear, I should say uh, a freshman team. Now, but they, based on what you're saying, that seems to be a rarity at middle township to actually have a, to field a full freshman team. We haven't had a freshman team since I first, my first tenure back in the late eighties and early nineties. So um, we're uh, before you, what I don't want to do is push forward and not have the team is what I'm saying. So, but right now, the other day we had 23 freshmen at a workout. And I told the kids, if we can keep 20, we're going to push forward with playing you know, four or five freshman games. Um, problem, as you mentioned, there's not a whole lot of group two schools, group one schools that have freshman teams. So to play a freshman schedule, you got to play against the bigger schools. And and um, while I'm very excited about the numbers, you know, I got half of them that haven't played football and I don't want to throw them out against uh, St. Augustine or Atlantic City or something like that. So so we'll be somewhat tentative, but, but my expectation at this point is to play three or four freshman games we can get them. So we're excited about that as well. I mean, that's great news for your program and obviously the town itself, you know, the growing numbers in your program. So talking about some of the guys that are coming back, a couple of the skill guys that uh, obviously jumped down the page to me, Michael Zarfati, obviously a, a all-world wide receiver for you guys, good star on the basketball court as well. Uh, Tyree Moore, you got Remy Rodriguez, two running backs back, uh, just a couple of those guys as well. Um, I. I'll get into Jerry White in a second because I remember calling a couple of games for you guys last year, and he was obviously absent due to injury. But the skill guys I just mentioned there, you know, Zarfati, Moore, and Rodriguez, I mean, those are three key guys for you, on, especially on the offensive side of the ball. It makes you probably one of the more dangerous group two offenses here in South Jersey. Well, one of the things that that that, that people aren't aware of, um, we, we were going to have an alternating fullback system last year um, with Tyree and another young name by the name of Sean Watkins, who also – we lost in our Glassboro game, I think. No, it was the Oakcrest game with a broken hand. We lost him for the entire year. So, and he's a 220 pound, uh, you know, fullback as well. So we're going to rotate them. And we've got Jeremiah Jones back on the team this year. He's been absent for two years, who was our leading rusher as a freshman, um, who's got a ton of ability. 
So we're 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 going to have some obviously some balance there. Remy's I, I just I think Remy's special when it comes to the running backs in the area, and you know Michael Sarfati just just catches everything we throw at him, and he, and you know on you know, everybody looks at him as an offensive threat. He had six interceptions last year too, so he's uh you know he's uh obviously in a position for us where we're excited we can throw the ball we can run the ball and we're going to have the balance and the ability to get these guys a little bit of a break too and then of course mark at quarterback mark oliver um you know we we were very hesitant last year he's done nothing but improve and with micah coming over as a transfer there's competition there and you know this when, when your college days as well there's nothing better than improving a football team than having competition at the positions and 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 we're fortunate because we've got it in our key spots right now yeah, that's why I never understood the mantra of if you have two quarterbacks, you have zero. You guys right. have two quarterbacks, and you're looking good at the position this year. So a couple of guys that were banged up last year, they, they are coming back, and one that stands out was Jerry White, one of your star linebackers from 2022. Got hurt very early in the season. It was kind of – it really stunk to see him out for almost the entire year uh, last fall. So what, what what's been his rehab like, and how has he been able to overcome that injury and get ready here for 2023? Well, he, he's doing very well. You know, one of the things that, you know, being a young man and, and of his age, he wants to get back out there as quickly as he can. And obviously we're following the doctor protocol right now to make sure that that we can secure him being out there for us in the fall. Um, he's deceptively athletic, and I don't mean that in any dis in any disrespectful <laughs> way. Um, he's not flashy. He's not he's not the strongest on the team. He's not the fastest on the team. But he always seems to be involved in making plays on defense, and we greatly missed that last year. And to to have to have knowledge that th that that's probably going to happen again, he's going to return. That's just going to balance us out on the other side of the ball. Now you mentioned some of the newcomers. I haven't run down here. Micah McHenry and uh, Jeremiah Jones. You just mentioned him before as well. Talk about those guys uh, transferring into the program. Well, Micah uh, wound up at St. Augustine. He he played in our youth program with all of these guys. Um, and he's friends. He, you know, one of the advantages of him coming in is he knows everybody. He He's familiar with their athleticism and they communicated together. Um, he, he's a very strong young man. Uh, he's an excellent student. He's an exceptional lacrosse player. And um, he's pushing. They're pushing each other ac athletically uh, for the quarterback position. Um, regardless of who wins the position, I think they'll both play at some point throughout the year a quarterback, but they're both athletically inclined enough to play. They're going to be playing somewhere. And Mike is an exceptional outside linebacker. So with Jerry on one side and possibly him on the other side, that's really going to it's going to bode well for us in certain games, I think. So without obviously giving too much away, and of course, we're only in mid-July right now, but your quarterback competition, you alluded to it uh, earlier in this conversation. How do you foresee that going, and how do you uh, – when do you anticipate making a decision? Some coaches either make it now or they wait until almost game week uh, for week zero. Well, you know, in a group two school, we'll, we'll, we'll tread lightly, um, and, and they'll go both get reps. You know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out in the next couple of weeks. One of the things that we're doing this year that – that we've never done because I'm not really a fan of them. And I don't mean this disrespectfully to the schools that are doing them, but the seven on seven situation is not really football to me, but we try to put it in a situation where we're doing a few of them this year. Um, we're we're going to see who throws the ball. Well, who more importantly, when I met with them and I discussed this situation with them, I told them, I'm not necessarily looking who can throw the ball further. who I think is going to throw more touchdowns. I'm looking forward to who's going to lead the team. That's the biggest thing with us. And um, that person will step up and the other one will help us in so many other capacities because of their athleticism. So we're excited about both of them. They're both in the right frame of mind. I don't think there's going to be any animosity to who the, the winner is and, and or anything like that. We're just going to keep pushing forward. They're great kids. They got great family support. And, and I expect to move forward with that regardless of the outcome. Uh, with the schedule, I know you mentioned that the schedule is a little bit tougher here in 2023. You wanted to load it up, obviously help you guys play better football, play up to the standard that you know you want to exceed your standard, get back to the playoffs for a third straight year as well. Uh, what, what were your a uh, couple of your takeaways from this year's schedule compared to uh, last fall? Well, I'll, I'll tell you right now that that I think there's four playoff teams on our schedule just in a regular season. Um, you know, Oak Crest will make the playoffs again and they're in our group. So, you know, that's a highly competitive and highly anticipated game. We didn't play very well in that game last year was our first game. Their second, we had three turnovers and, and a muff punch. So um, we're looking forward to that, but you know, he does a great job and their kids are very athletic. So that's a big test. Then the next week we go to Glassboro um, who has a new coach and a new system. So that, that, that'll be a challenge for us. And they've always got a ton of athletes. That was a 16 to 11 game last year. We've got Pleasantville who I expect to be right in the mix in the division with, with us and, and um, Glassboro. And then we added wall in the middle of the season, who's a perennial 
playoff group three team, um, you know, who, who had some struggles last year, rebounded and won like four of their last uh, five games. But, um, you know, they're, they're in the tw high 20s to 30s with playoff appearances over, over their uh, school, uh, you know, history. So um, that's a great game for us because it's in the middle of our season. And one of the things that we've been struggling with, not struggling with, but I, I don't know that we were necessarily preparing our kids with some of the, the toughness and athleticism that we're going to get. By, by playing um, certain teams with regard to our schedule. And that's not a reflection on the people on our schedule. I just wanted to make sure that we were doing a better job as coaches to prepare our kids um, for a potential playoff situation down the road since the kids know what it's like, know how to get there. And, and you know, barring any injuries, we expect to get there again. But um, that, that game in the middle of the season is going to be a, a real challenge for us. It's on the road. We have to travel, you know, two hours to get there. So um, the kids are looking forward to it. It'll be a nice challenge for us. And, um, you know, we'll see where we go from there. But the, the schedule itself, um, Clayton will be improved. We, we open with, with an improving Cumberland team who won six games last year. So, you know, we don't feel like there's any gimmies on our schedule. That's for sure. Um, and when you're a group two school and you're playing other group twos and threes and, and, and mixing in a four here and there, you, you, you got to perform very well and you got to get every point you can. And that's what the kids understand now. So you mentioned the playoff success, and obviously you wanted to load up your schedule with playoff teams as well. Group two, I feel like it's a very underrated uh, playoff group, especially in South Jersey. You guys are, as you mentioned before, made back-to-back -back playoff appearances. You're still searching for that first playoff win. It seems like that has eluded the program, but you're knocking right on the door. You're on the cusp of that. Just talk about the goal to that. Again, it, it's one game at a time. I know that I know that coach speaking, of course, the playoffs in New Jersey have, have been expanded to a full state title now for all these groups. Just talk about reaching that first goal and then making the stepping stones to keep improving off that first playoff win. Well, you know, we, we we're so convinced that, that it's important in, the, in to, to play um, playoff caliber teams to prepare, prepare your kids for later on in the year. You can look at, you know, um, the mainlands, the Ocean Cities, those school in the areas, the St. Augustine, who play those teams year in and year out, um, the Cedar Creeks, and, you know, they're always lining up to play in the playoffs. And I think there's something to be said for making sure you're challenging your kids on a regular basis. We're so convinced that we're that so much so that we've got Haddonfield for a scrimmage um, on the uh, 16th of uh, August. So, um, and, and I, you know, they've got most of all their people back, and I fully expect them to be um, not, if not win the thing, you know, be one of the major con considerations for, for winning that group two title. So um, we're going to do that one. And then, um, you know, move into our, you know, our heavy loaded front end schedule with those playoff teams. So if we can come out of that and, and continue to get better, not necessarily win the games, but continue to get better because um, those are quality wins if you get them and those teams are all going to win games. So um, if you do the right things and, and, and you keep up with the confidence and, and our kids are pretty confident right now, particularly the seniors, because they they've been in two years of battle. Um, we think we're, we could be there in the end and, and hopefully challenge for that first playoff win, which is what our goal is this year. Middle Township head coach Frank Rigaton with me here on Cape Atlantic live on Cal one on one. Coach, uh, I, I, you, you talk about these big goals for Middle Township. I mean, what does that mean to this school, to this community? You mentioned how it, everything is just on a continued rise. Everything is trending up. If, like, if you're looking at the stock market, it's trending up right now for you guys. Again, back-to-back -back playoff appearances, looking for that first playoff win, and you have a really talented team here in 2023 to possibly do that. You know, what does this do for the community uh, in and around Middle Township? Well, the community support's been great. I mean, we, we've had a number of – of people involved with our youth program that have come up to the high school program and help us. Um, likewise, there, there have been some coaches that are no longer at the high school that will work with the youth program that are running our system to a certain extent, which, um, you know, big thing there is not necessarily a system, but teaching black blocking and tackling. And, and, and they're very good with those kinds of things. But the support from the community at our games on Friday night is, is just phenomenal. Um, the kids come out, they paint themselves up just like they do for the other sports. And um, you can hear them. And, and, and it's neat and they're friends with everybody and they come running on the field when there's success. And um, they, they do the same thing at the soccer games, the basketball games. Um, and I make sure I make it a point that at least once or twice every year, we practice out back the field, the field hockey game field is there. Um, I'll take, you know, 15, 20 minutes away from a practice so that they can cheer the girls on. We've got that kind of community relationship within the building. And of course, Sharon, before she moved up to the principal's job, did an outstanding job cultivating that situation and Josh Josh has just trans transcended that and and created a team-like system where we're all working together and, and and it's fun it's really fun 
What do you think changed in the last few years? I'm going back. I'm talking to my youth football days where, you know, I, I lived in a township growing up. So programs like that, bigger areas like that, you know, the, you know, the mainland, the mainland regional high schools, Atlantic cities, you just mentioned before these bigger group four, group five schools, they seem to run the area in Atlantic County and even more so towards Cape May County because they kind of overshadowed the smaller schools. What do you think has changed over the past, let's just say five to seven years where now these group one, group two schools, such as yourself, you know, Middle Township now on the rise compared to the gap that, that, that there used to be between the bigger enrollments and the smaller enrollments? Well, the biggest thing is, I think, in our situation has been uh, the ability to, to attract the eighth graders into a lifting system. Um, what we've did, we've made the room available to them. Uh, we not only get people that want to play football, we get other athletes and other sports that will come into the room and um we weren't really doing that before because you really couldn't do it before. Um, you know, there were rules and regulations against that, but we've accommodated, we, we schedule them in such a situation. They can't lift with the, with the high school students, but yet they can be involved with certain situations as other eighth graders. And then uh, we've opened a room to them. Hey, this is there. If you want to do this, we've reached out to the parents. We've gotten them involved. There's a lot of connection with um, youth programs, um, there's even been a move, as you probably well know, to some AAU football situations, which have evolved one in Middle Township. There's another one. Uh, I think they're called the Atlantic City. Uh, I forget. But anyway, they our kids have played in that as well. And I'm not necessarily a, an, an advocate for continuing to play football year round because it, it's very hard on the body. Uh, I think the kids should do as much as they possibly can. And if they're willing to play basketball and baseball and those kinds of things outside of football season, but yet you're open in the room to get them in the room for weightlifting because they understand the importance of that in other sports, that's a big step. And I think a lot of schools are doing that now. So we're looking ahead now to 2023 and a couple more for you, coach. You know, the, the schedule, I've always been fascinated. And I ask a lot of coaches about this, how it's been continually moved up now. So sometimes you're playing you're about you're you're preparing for game three by the time school starts around Labor Day weekend. I mean, I find that fascinating. Uh, have you liked the changes to the schedule over the past couple of years when it comes to moving the schedule up? We're adding a state championship game now to all the groups, so you have a state champion. Some New Jersey has lagged behind other big football states in the past, but what do you make of now moving it up? And now you're basically saying to these kids, "Hey, I mean, I know it's summer vacation, but we have a game in two weeks now at this point." Well, that's that's been a little bit of a change. And, and to be very honest with you, I'm not a fan of what we've done as a state. Um, and I'll give you a classic example why we're going to play nine games straight through um, with with our 10th game being a potential playoff game, September 27th or 28th, whatever that weekend is. And for all intents and purposes, if we don't win a playoff game, we're going to be done in the month of October. Whereas in years past, we played all the way through Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving became a problem because we were playing a game in the first week in November and then having to wait um, three weeks before we could play a game. And, you know, the kids are, um, they're tired. The coaches are tired. Um, fortunately, we had a rivalry situation where we were playing that rivalry. So there was something to push forward and look forward to. But if you don't have that and you're holding the kids for three weeks and you're expecting them to come to practice and, you know, a lot of my kids wrestle and play basketball, they, they're starting to get on that page. It's difficult, but I, I, I got to tell you, I, um, I don't know what the answer is. I think it's good to have state champions to recognize when, since we were one of the few states that was, was, do, was doing it. But at the same time, I mean, you're talking about high school football. We're, we got our, we got our first, we're going to play two games this year before school even starts, which we've never done. And then you couple that with the fact that we could be done at the end of October, you know, football college and, and um, NFL is going through December with their regular season. So um you know, something had to be done. They felt that was the right decision to do. But I, I, I mean, I think we're missing out on 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 the key components and the time frame of what football used to be, and that's November. Yeah, no doubt. I agree with you on that in terms of you know you could be done in October, and all of a sudden the whole month of November you're not playing a game, and even this in the situations of the few teams in throughout the entire state that even still do play a Thanksgiving game, they're waiting three almost four weeks to play mm -hmm. just that one game that only means something for a rivalry trophy. So. And I know you just said you don't have really have the answer to it. Uh, I mean, I'm going to throw an idea just real quick. Do you see a situation where these seasons could potentially overlap only in the case of playoffs, where I thought they were originally going to just push the playoffs further and further back? So if you made it to a state championship game, you're going to over like you're going to overlap with football or sorry, with uh, wrestling and basketball and whatever other or tr well, winter track, to, for for instance. I mean, do you see that being a scenario or a solution maybe in a couple of years if, if they revisit the schedule? 
Well, I, I mean, I'll, I'll go one step further with that in, in saying that I, I don't want to be selfish either, and I don't want to hurt the other programs. I mean, they had already rolled basketball back to the point where they're finishing their regular season schedule in the, in the first week of February yeah. before, the, you know, before their league tournament starts. So I don't necessarily fair to that. That's fair to kids, and I'll, and I'll give you a reason why. Uh, and I don't want to talk about basketball, but using that as an example, and wrestling's always finished earlier except for the yeah. individual periods. But a basketball situation, you get into that – your league tournament and you're a certain seed and you're playing another school talk about not having freshman teams. So, so where you might've been able to schedule uh, other opponents in that time frame where you can play a freshman in JV schedule, that's not necessarily the case with these mm -hmm. situations now. So the kids are missing out on the, on the game situation, as far as overlapping, I, I don't I didn't mind the overlapping, but I don't want it to take away from obviously um, the other sports that, that 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 move forward, and at the same time, I want to make sure that the kids understand that you start something, you got to finish something, and 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 sometimes, you know, when we were overlapping in the past, and our and our JV season might conclude two weeks before the the, the you know I was losing JV kids because they were going over to play basketball or wrestle in preparation for their upcoming season with individual training, not necessarily with school training. So um, we weren't keeping them. And, and, and I think we were losing interest there. So, you know, one hand, it's a good thing. The other hand, it's not, but I, I think that what you're going to do, I think you're asking me an evaluation, push forward what you've done. You've got a system in place right now, see how it works. I'm very concerned about um, the time frame with which we have to start. It's hot. I mean, it's really, oh, hot. it is. And, you know, and, and we got black helmets. So, um, you know, and, and, and if we're home, we're wearing black jerseys, sometimes all black. Now, we usually don't do that to start the season. But when you're playing at six o'clock, it's still warm. And that's not just for us. That's for everybody. So if the kids can, you know, if we, if we can get the kids in shape and, and, and we can push through it, then fine. But I think all that has to be looked at as you move forward. If you guys have clean all white uniforms, maybe throw a white helmet out there with a little bit of orange. I think that that'll be good for your first two, three games of the season. Yeah. <laughs> well, one more for you, Coach Head Coach Frank Rigatano of Middle Township High School, with me here on Cape Atlantic Live on Cal One on One. Coach, just looking ahead now, just an overall message now to your team, the fans, the school, the community, everything, kind of bringing it all back to Middle Township football in the present day, twenty twenty three. We're about five, six weeks out from the season. From, from actually kicking off, which is, again, still hard to believe already, uh, the message that you guys want to send as a program to everyone in and around the Middle Township community and what you guys can potentially accomplish this, this fall. Well, the, me the message is, is pretty clear in this sense that this is the most veteran-laden team that I've ever had in 22 years of coaching. Uh, we've got 19 seniors, and every one of them has had uh, some aspect or, or contribution to the varsity program in the last couple of years. And they like each other. They work together very well. And, and our schedule is conducive to being in, you know, you're going to see quality football, not only on our side, but both sides. And, you know, we'll, we'll win our share. We'll probably lose our share. But a lot of that will depend on how quickly the kids transfer um, their athleticism into some of the new things that we're trying to tweak over. And uh, I just know one thing that the community, the community is going to be excited. The kids should be excited and everybody should be excited about the kids because they're working their tail off right now and, or their tails off. And um, we're, we're, we're ready to go. We're, we're excited. We can't wait to get rolling. And, and it's funny because every year I tell the seniors, you know, Hey, this is your last July and this is your last August. But with this crew, I mean, they've seen, they've heard it for, you know, for almost four years now and when they were playing varsity football and now it, it's, I think it's going to start to sink in. So um, we'll see where we go. We're excited. Uh, we're, you know, the game itself is, is encouraging for us from, from the middle township perspective, but you know, anything can happen when you start the season. So we'll, we're going to start fresh. We're going to take it one day at a time, as everybody always says, and then we'll see where we go from there. Love that message, especially for the seniors. It does go by in a flash. I can obviously attest to that as well. I mean, over over 10 years ago already, it was just hard to believe. So, Coach, <laughs> thank you for joining me on Cape Atlantic Live on Cal one-on-one. -on -one. Good luck this season. Looking forward to watching you guys. Hopefully we uh, cross paths, of course, this fall. See what you guys can do. And if that first playoff victory comes around, I'll be sure to help you guys uh, throw, throw the celebration for that one too. Well, Nick, thank you. And thank Matt and everybody involved with your organization. Um, it, it goes without saying what you bring to the table for the kids in the community is outstanding. And um, in South Jersey, in particular our area, I don't necessarily think we get the recognition that we deserve all the time. And it's starting to become more popular and more recognizable in other parts of the state because of the job that you guys do. So thank you so much for what you do for the kids. Well, we appreciate that. Head coach Frank Rigatano of Middle Township High School Football right here on Cal one-on-one. -on -one.